down for you. Juan Castillo is a prisoner in Texas. If the state has its way, he'll be dead within the hour. This is Execution Watch. Huntsville, Texas, death penalty capital of the Western world, where prison staff is preparing to put Castillo to death by injecting a deliberate drug overdose into his veins. During the next hour, KPFT's Execution Watch will broadcast live coverage of the killing in Texas, the state responsible for more than a third of all U.S. executions. Execution Watch host Ray Hill, with criminal defense attorneys Larry Douglas, Mike Gillespie, Jack Lee, and Paige Yannick. Huntsville report outside the death house, Linda Huhan. Tonight's show will include Castillo's 20-minute interview with Execution Watch taped recently at his request on death row. The execution watch for Juan Castillo begins. Good evening, this is Ray Hill. Uh, you're listening to radio station KPFT Houston. Uh, it is Execution Watch's turn to cover the execution of Juan Castillo, who is in Huntsville. We have a reporter, and uh, the producer is going to connect her up right now. I want to remind those of you who tuned in ready for Arab voices that uh, we're preempting their show tonight because we do that on this serious occasion of an execution. But Arab Voices will be back next week uh, at its regular time and continue. Linda? Linda? Uh, the uh, witnesses are crossing the line now. Well, we got an early start this time. Is there start time? Yeah, it's start time. Uh, go ahead, Linda. Uh, speak a little louder so that we can get you better here. Okay, uh, the witnesses are crossing the line at this moment. Well, you actually talked to Juan earlier in the day and his family. Is that true? Yes, that's true. I was with him Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Well, we appreciate your vigilance uh, in doing that. Uh, what kind of crowd do we have outside of the walls? Well, actually, there's only like uh, 10 of us. Uh, they have, um, Gloria couldn't make it tonight. Okay, so there's only 10 uh, uh, demonstrators opposed to execution uh, before, yes. the, uh, before the before uh, the the walls where the execution takes place. Linda, how yes. often are you up there? Uh, I come every execution. Occasionally you go inside your witness. Yes. I, in fact, next month I will be a witness for Danny Bible. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, while this is going on, be sure and uh, train uh, young Joseph. I sure will. Okay? I sure will. Okay, we love you, and thank you very much for letting us know. Uh, I'll explain to the audience that when the witnesses cross the road, it means that Juan has been strapped into the gurney, and the, um, the tubes are in place into his veins because the procedure will start promptly after everybody assembles in the execution chamber. And so uh, 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 then this procedure will continue until the witnesses are dismissed and they will come out across the road. Uh, uh, Linda, you will let us know when that happens? Yes, I will. I appreciate it. And uh, tonight, Robert Hurst of TDCJ uh, we'll read a brief statement about the execution before the end of tonight's program. Thank so, you, Ray. Thank you. Uh, that's uh, that's the beginning. And, uh, um, Janik, what happened in this case? In this case, Mr. Castillo, in early December of 2003, uh, had, a, had a rendezvous with a girl who was his girlfriend at the time and who had been the former girlfriend of the decedent. And um, 
he and... By the, deceiving, you mean victim of the crime. The victim of the crime, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Castillo and the girlfriend, um, is it Miss Esperanza? Yes. Yes. Um, Mr. Castillo and Miss Esperanza... I think it's Espinosa. Espinosa, excuse me. Miss Espinosa met with the decedent and went out on a date with him to a San Antonio lover's lane. This was an infamous area where a bunch of people had gone before. And at that San Antonio lover's lane, Mr. Castillo and a co-defendant set up a meeting with uh, Miss Espinosa's former boyfriend, who is the decedent. They set up a meeting. They, 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 they. It. The evidence shows that they lied in wait, and okay. so they they were prepared for they them were to pre- get there. They were prepared for them to get there. They were dependent upon uh, Miss Espinosa to get them there. Indeed. And and so. Uh, Though she may have been a passenger car, she had some decision of where they parked. She did have some decision-making capability in this uh, in this encounter. In any event, uh, the two the two gentlemen, uh, Mr. Castillo and uh, Mr. Gonzalez, set upon uh, the decedent and. It appears from the evidence shown in court that Mr. Castillo chased after the decedent, firing a gun rapidly at him multiple times. Uh, The decedent fell to the ground and died. And Mr. Castillo was accused of both murder and then subsequently capital murder. Um, his co-defendants, uh, Miss... And what would have made this capital murder is a robbery during which? There was, there was evidence showing that they were attempting to commit aggravated robbery, that that was the plan, and that murder resulted during the attempt to commit the aggravated robbery, and it was aggravated because there was a weapon involved. Well, if nobody got killed, it would have been a robbery, and uh, if uh, it wouldn't have been a robbery, it would just have been a regular killing and not a capital case. Correct. Okay. In any event... um, the two co-defendants, Mr. Castillo's two co-defendants, pled for lesser included offenses. Wait a minute. When were these people identified and arrested? Well, Mr. Castillo was identified last in the scenario. Uh, Miss Espinosa, Miss mm-hmm. Espinosa was identified second. And the first person who was identified was Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez was captured at the scene. Oh, okay. Fairly, fairly readily after okay. uh, the incident occurred, and Miss Espinosa was taken into custody two or three days later. It was a longer period of time before Mr. Castillo was taken into Were custody. Were they looking for him, or? Yes, they were, because Mr. Gonzalez was going ahead and providing evidence and, and statements to the police from he his a right. from his very capture. So the person that was killed took off. Yes. And he was pursued uh, by uh, Juan Castillo. By Mr. Castillo, according yes. According to the stories that we have. According to the stories that we have. And, and so uh, and when Juan could have would kept on going. Now, wasn't there, there was, something about jewelry? Yes. Um, Mr. Uh, the decedent was wearing a necklace. He was a rap star in San Antonio. And he was wearing a, a very, flashy necklace. A, a, very bling, large, bling, bling. a very, very large gold necklace on a heavy gold chain prior to his death. And this necklace was seen on Mr. Castillo the night 
af- of the murder. Not of the murder. Later than that. Later that day. And uh, it was remarked upon by other people. And because it was such a unique piece of jewelry, it was known to have been, had to have belonged to the decedents, to the decedent. And the fact that Mr. Castillo was wearing it was further evidence in the trial and of the issue of whether or not he was involved involved in the murder. What happened to the weapon? The weapon involved was never recovered. Um, Later in the trial, evidence was obtained from, I believe, Mr. Castillo, that he said it was thrown off in a vacant lot in his flight. Um or it was suggested that it was cast off during his flight from the scene of the crime. Okay. But the weapon itself was never recovered. Uh, I went to um, Livingston, Texas, Mark Pirtle, our uh, videographer and um, one of the great technicians that work on the show, and I go to, if we're asked, by inmates on death row. Uh, We go up there and interview them in advance. And what will follow here is uh, about a 22-minute interview with uh, Juan Castillo that was uh, recorded about two weeks ago. Mark, is that right? About two weeks ago. And uh, we drove uh, all day, had a nice uh, lunch, and went out to the Polanski unit and uh, met... uh, Robert Hurt, who will be on later, and uh, we uh, went in and visited uh, Juan. Uh, It was, um, well, you'll hear it. Uh, uh, Juan has had several execution dates, and uh, early in the interview I remarked that he's the only person that I've ever met that got a delay of execution because of bad weather. Uh, they delayed his execution because uh, it was not uh, appropriate to transport him on the incident of Harvey. <clears throat> you ready for the interview, Bob? Please. Juan, tell us about who you were before all this mess happened. You know, I don't know. I was just, I don't know. I was just running the streets. You know, I wasn't really thinking too far ahead. I was just, I basically was going day by day because I was always in and out of jail. So the times I spent free since I was 17 were a few and far in between, you know. I spent more time locked up than I did in free since then, you know. And I said, it's like I'd get sentenced to the free road, like, you know, three, four months in the free and then come and get locked up for, for a while, a couple of years, or whatever, and then back out for a couple months and then back in again. And, then, and that was normal for you? Yeah, it was pretty much since I was 17. And. Where did this happen? What city? San Antonio. San Antonio. Yeah. Bear County. Bear County. And I don't know. I just, you know, I, I, I should have been, I don't know. I should, I should have been different because, you know, I had, I had a wife and kids. And I was just, I still, I, I don't know. I just, I lived every day by it. Just what's going to happen that day, right? I didn't think ahead. And just, that's, that's how it was. Just, you know, it was it, life. Yeah, pretty much. But everybody's living like that, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a daily thing. It's just, Yeah. Normal. Yeah. Life. So you were in and out of jail a lot, had a lot of friends there. It didn't make any difference which side of the bars you were on, you well, had friends. I, actually actually you a lot of my friends I met well I was locked up and we got from when I get, oh, yeah. get out and that's where I met them from, right? <laughs> that's the most right, except for like except for two of them, right? I've known them for since I was younger. But then the, but then too I, I I'm like my closest friend was a guy named Robert. And you know, me and him met in the county school. Everybody in the county school at that time was either on T Y C Pro or felony probation. So you know the whole school's like that. Yeah. And, you know every the whole the whole school, and the school we went to is it was an old Sears warehouse, and they had no cafeteria in the school. It was just in this warehouse. So they had and when you go into the, when you go to school that in the morning, you know they take your shoes, socks off, you know do the metal detector, pat you down, and you have a dress code. Like put when you in I came in here. Yeah, like that. So and they put you in this. And in each class you have a teacher and, and a security. Every class, you know what I'm saying? And it's all security, are military um, guys, right? And that's the, that's where we met, and you know. It's, so it, basically, everybody I met is while we've been locked up, you know, say somewhere doing something, right? And you know, that's, that's how it was, man. It's just 
that's just how what life was, and then in, in, in where we were at. You know, I think back now, like, damn, you know what the hell? You know, he just, I trip out. Sometimes I think, like, you know, certain things, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking at the time, you know? Because, you know, you think back now, and, and you just wish now that your kids never get like that. And, you know, hopefully the, the mold and the, and the cycle breaks here. You know, I've been locked up now going on 15 years, so, you know, it's just, you have a whole different mentality. You've been locked up 15 years on this case? Yeah, I've been locked up since 03. Yeah, and you know, you mature, grow, you know. And like my mentality now is nothing like how it used to be when I was when I was when I was free, right? It's just, you know, I think I'm talking about like like not just in one perspective, like all the way around. And you know, it's, I wish I would have a chance to be free with the mentality I have now, you know, than than the one than what I had before. But, you know. Oh, tell me about your family. Um, I don't really got a big family. I got, a, I got, a, I got a, um, you know, my mom, dad. I got, oh, I got my wife. But well, you know, we're, we're we're not together no more. We're, we're still married, but we're not together. We're, we're we're cool, I guess. Still, um, I got three two kids and I got three sons and a possible daughter. Um, you know, I just, and how old are they now? The oldest is twenty one, and nineteen, and then sixteen, and then possibly fifteen. Are they following Papa in the wild trail? Or are they? Uh, the, my middle son, Juan, um, I think maybe he's he's missing a little bit. I hope not, but you know, I just I, I really had no contact with him, right? Well, the only the only, uh, only son I had more contact with was my son Julian, and you know he, you know he's doing pretty good and, uh, compared to what I, how I was, right? But he, you know, he's missing a little bit in school. But I try to get him. To, to go right. He says he's gonna do right too next next year because he already messed up the semester this this year. So next year he's gonna do. He says he's gonna do better. He's gonna graduate high school. He said he's gonna he's gonna get on the ball. He's gonna make up for the credits he messed up this year. So you know, that's that's good. You know, I'll you're not that. much able to manage that from in here. Yeah, but you know, I could, I, all that thing is tell him is that you know you can't we can't force him to do nothing, especially from here. You can just tell him and hopefully he, he'll you. Take to heart what you're saying, you know, and do do what's right. They stay with your wife or your mother. Well, they stay um with um the oldest, uh, Julian and Jacob. They're with they're with my wife, and my other son. He's with his mom, or I think I'm not too sure. And the other woman, um, I believe she might be with. I don't know who she might be with. Her mo her mother was murdered back in mm. you know in a way. So I have, I have no idea, and that's why I say I don't even know if she she my daughter or not. Um. But yeah, it's just, it's just mis messed up, right? Well, you're the only person I've ever talked to that actually got a stay of execution because of bad weather. Already, I'm hoping another one comes out too. <laughs> so you'll take you'll take a, 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 nah, just, I don't, I don't another want, Harvey, huh? Nah, I don't want another Harvey. You know, I got to fix too many people. I take a, a sinkhole underneath the death oh, chamber. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice massive th sink, sinkhole underneath the death chamber. I follow them up. Follow that up, right? That way, everybody else can get fall back, right? And they'll probably have pull out a mobile gurney or something. <laughs> yeah, because well, we were all ready to do the show, and then it, it got canceled because of bad weather. And I yeah. said, ain't this something? Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Stormy, we're timed on your way. you got somebody out looking for you. Yeah, all right, man. So this is my fourth date now. Fourth I went, day. I went through three of them last year. I spent nine months on Death Watch. Yeah. And now this one, too. Could you characterize what's different about Death Watch and regular Death Rock? Um, you got a camera in your cell? Hmm? You got a camera in your cell? And you only wreck in, in one day room? That's oh, it. That's it. That's it. Everything is the same. Yeah. And, and you don't even know whether anybody's watching or not? Oh, they're watching because, you, you know, if you cover it up, hey, you don't cover your camera, so they're watching. They're, 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 they have access to the cameras through a bunch of different channels over here. And you got the, then you're in the picket, you got the monitors where they watch you to the, mon the picket, too. But you know, the camera ain't nothing, you know, it's just, I put up a curtain, you know, with, every now and then. And other than that, I don't, I don't mess with it, right? I just forget about it. So, but it's, it's nothing. I don't, I, to me, I don't, I don't really care what cell I'm in over here, Death Watcher or not. You know, the only thing it is is the date, get the date off, and I don't care, right? So, they could leave me on Death Watch the whole time, I wouldn't care. Who's representing you at this point? Uh, Texas Innocent Network and, and, and Texas Defender Service. Okay. And Some pretty good lawyers over there. Yeah. So, I got two issues pending right now. For for uh, Texas Defender Service has those. Uh, Texas Instant Network. I'm not too sure right now what what they have planned, but I got those two right now. One's in CCA, one's Supreme Court. 
uh, studying your case, and I do that before I come down here, I understand that there's an issue about a witness in your case that lied under oath. Yes. It was quite um that well, I was already like three or four days into trial. He came forward and said that I I, I told him that, that that I committed the crime while we were incarcerated together, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're talking about the jailhouse snitch that you had no previous connection to. Well no check it out. So this is this how I went like in the county jail, I was in high bond. I had a couple of cases. Everybody there had sure. either either capital murder cases or escape charges. Mm-hmm. Well he was there for escape. Okay, so yeah, he was he had he had something to sell. So he, yeah, so we, we're on a we're on, we're on a tier system in there. You know, in, in the first shift, one row will come out. Second shift, two row will come out, and then the next day they'll switch up. One row will come uh, will come out second, and then first, uh, one second, and two row will come out first. So we were never in the same rec group, never. So I don't know where I'm supposed to confess this to him, right? Because we're never in the same rec group, right? So you know, in the in the county jail, when I, I get I was I was in that in that pod for about maybe a month. And then I came back from federal court because I had a, a, a federal um, case pending while I got locked when I, when, I, when I got locked up on this case. So I came from back court and the officer said, hey, man, pack your stuff, get moved. I said, for what? He said, you got a co-defendant in the pod. I'm like, no, I don't. He said, well, you got moved here while you're at court. And I said, all right, cool. So I got moved. I went to Exeg for a little bit. I went some months there. And then the, the so-called co-defendant, he, when he was in high bond, something happened. He went to, he went moved to a Mexican mafia pod. So then, then they put me back in, the, in, in, in high bond. They took me out of state, put me back in high bond. And I put me in the same cell he was in, right? So um, everybody told me, hey, yeah, this, this was one of his, home, his, his homeboys and stuff like that, right? Which was that guy, right? And he would come try to talk to me sometimes through the door, right? He'd try to come talk to me. And he sent me um, little kites and everything, you know, asking for newspapers and, f- and food and sure. all this stuff, right? So, you know, I'd every now and then, right? But it, you know, he was my homeboy, so I wasn't giving it to him free. You know, so I told him, hey, you may call me, so you pay me back, right? That guy, right? So one day, you know, in the county jail, too, in San Antonio, like your, your, visitation, your visitation days depend on your last name. Mm-hmm. So his last name is Gutierrez and Castillo, so we had the same visitation days, right? So one day they told me, hey, Castillo, you got to visit. Like, all right. So they let me out of my, my cell and I go to the picket because I had to wait for an escort desk. Sure. You know, there. So he comes down, too. I told you, you got to visit. He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So after he comes, he escorts us to visit. And I see he's in, he's in front of me as we go. He's in front of me. So I see the visitor come in, his visitor, and I recognize her. And she's a niece of my so-called co-defendant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... I look at it like, oh, you know, that don't, you know. So when we come back, I know who she is. I, I recognize her. You know what I'm saying? So when we come back, I tell him, "Who comes to see you?" He's like, "Off oh, my chick." All right. So I ain't said nothing about it. I was like, "All right, go here." So you know, after that, all that goes back, I go to trial. Next thing you know, the fool comes out of trial. And says, "I told him I, I committed a crime." I told my attorney, "Hold on, man. This fool right here is connected to him." But my attorney would never show you. I told him, "Look, go get the visitations from from the county jail. It'll show you he's connected to this guy." Well, who represented you in that crime? Um, Vincent Callahan, horrible attorney. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do his job. And we're going to explore that trial yeah. from its transcript. Uh, did you get any recognition of that issue on appeal? No, it would never. Okay, it, it, he never. He didn't recant until after I was in the federal. Well, I, I was in. I, yeah, I was in federal court already. So my my my, my federal attorney. Um, I, I was told that he went to he didn't go through proper channels. Well, he went and got the the fool he went candid, right? And instead of telling the federal court, you know, can you can you hold up and let's go back and exhaust this issue in the state, he just files into the federal and they deny it. The procedure you barred didn't go to the proper channel, right? So I had to wait to get kicked out of the the, the, the federal, get kicked out of the uh, fifth circuit, kicked out of the Supreme Court, and to get back in the state. And that's when we filed it and I got to stay on it. Okay, but, so you did get a stay on that issue. Yes, that was a tribute. previously. Yes. So that issue has been considered and it resulted in a stay. Yes, but then the, 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 this is another thing, man. This is this is the crazy part, is because, okay, um, okay. Let me go back to the trial part, right? Okay, so when he's in trial, they ask him, "Well, why'd you come forward?" He says, "Oh, I'm taking so much from society, and I want to give back." Like, all right, you know, the way we could deal with you. He's like, "No, I, I came by myself, this and that." You know, when it shows that he he didn't come just because he didn't. He, he was he's connected with this dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not my case. And well, Mister took it so much from society, and wanted to give back. You know where he's at right now? Yeah, it's a life sentence population for, for, for killing a woman and, and burning her, sitting there on fire and everything. And that happened in October 06. That was um, uh, 14 months after my trial. So his, his uh, pattern of behavior did not benefit for the deals he was able to cut. Well, as I was saying, I don't know, I don't know what deals he's had, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know all that. But I'm saying, even if he didn't have a deal, there was a purpose for him to come, and it was to help out that dude. You know what I'm saying? 
because it was, there was no, okay, I'm, like I'm talking about attorneys, man. No, I, I know from Bear County Jail. I, actually, I wrote a policy for Bear County Jail. Uh -huh. What to do with people with Tourette syndrome. Oh, okay. And so somebody comes in and they call them cops, all their mother things and, and all of that. They have a policy how not to injure that person's right because they have a mental thing. <laughs> I don't think that works too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that. I do with my spare time is write yeah. jail policies. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's crazy right, with that, right? But, um, okay, so, yeah, so, so when we, well, okay, in 2015, I'm reading the San Antonio newspaper. Yeah. And I see a trial going on in the 186th district courtroom, which is my courtroom. Mm -hmm. And it says the judge, presiding judge, Jefferson Moore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Jefferson Moore, I recognize that name because I had an attorney, a prior attorney named Jefferson Moore. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, this guy, you know, he, he was called, he, he, he gets found guilty at the, at the and a couple days later he gets found guilty and stuff, right? And they, they, they show a picture of Jefferson Moore sentencing him. I'm like, man, that used to be my lawyer. Yeah. So I told my attorneys about that, right? And they're like, okay, we'll see if that's a conflict of interest, right? Well, nothing went about it with that. And then, um, Oh, well, okay. if, if he had been a lawyer in any part of your case, he can't sit as judge. Yeah. Well, he was—he was on a prior case. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. but but I think the way it's supposed to work. Oh uh, yeah, but but check this, this thing though. Um, now he recused himself though when I got the, when I got to stay for the simple fact is he used to represent Gutierrez too oh. on a prior case. So he recused himself. Well, my judge, my, my 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 case got resigned to another judge that was supposed to hear that issue. And that judge is Maria Teresa Her, which is my original trial uh, um, judge. I told my attorney right off the bat, I was like, man, that's not good. She's not going to do nothing in my favor. And sure enough, as soon as she got the case, next day she denies it. She didn't get, she didn't give, she, she didn't give me no due process in it. She didn't. It, yeah, but you got that on record, so you can appeal that issue. Well, they're appealing it right now, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, know it's getting close. The clock's ticking off. Notice how loud the clock ticks sometimes. Man, you know, even hey, you know, last year, nine months. Man, I was like. I, I, I did that time like I was a 10 year old knowing I was gonna live to be 100. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, yeah, I had, well, I, yeah. you know? Don't you think we all go through that? Yeah, but you know, I, I, you was, know, I, you, I didn't go to prison for nothing. You gotta work your way in prison. Yeah. Especially if you get a 160 year sentence. Yeah, but you know, I was, I was, you know, even right now, you know, I'm not, I'm not tripping, right? But at the same time, like, man, I see this year, they, no, no courts has got no action. Nobody's got an action. Everybody, they're, they're 6 0 right now, the courts. Thomas Whitaker, he got a, he got a, a clemency, but the courts didn't, he, he didn't give Yeah, it, but if it wasn't for his daddy, he wouldn't have gotten nothing. Yes, exactly. But if, it, if, if, if he wouldn't have got a clemency, they would have killed him. So right now, there's basically 6-0. I don't know. I guess election year or something, right? Something going on. They ain't trying to hear nothing. They ain't trying to hear nothing right now. And so I don't know. I don't know what's up with the case, right? That's, that's what's going on. But, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's crazy right now, so... What do you want people to remember about Juan Castillo? Really? Um, well, whatever they want to remember by. The ones people that know me, they'll remember by whatever they want to remember by. The people that know, don't know me, it don't really matter how they remember me. Most of the people watching this film are in Europe and Asia, yeah. in the Middle so. East, and in Australia. Yeah. Uh, 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 and so they don't know why. I know. So that, you know, say I, I don't, I, I couldn't know it. So I, I can't just really describe me. You have to get to know me. You know, and that's, I don't know. One, this is this. We're at the point where this is getting serious. Yeah. Can you handle it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can Look, handle anything. I'm like this, right? If, if God, won't, I, I really believe, truly believe that that God won't give me more than I can handle. You know what I'm saying? So if he fits me right here, then he said he figured I'm fit to take care of it, right? I don't do no stressing. I, I don't, I don't get depressed. You know, I'm able to laugh all the time. I, I never, I never lose my sense of humor. But you know what mothers and wives tell me about my show? Hmm. They thank me for their laughter. Oh. Because when mothers and wives are busy, there's not a laughter going on. But Uncle Ray can come up here and you hey. relax and let it down. And I'm the same at all times, right? I don't change up. I'm trying to be the same at all times. I don't want to be in a, in, a, in a down state. You know, I don't, I don't want to be like that. I don't. Well, Linda certainly thinks highly of you, and she's on my staff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's good, man. As a matter of fact, I'll be seeing her Monday. Give her my love, even though I'll be out there and can give her my love almost any time on the Internet. Yeah, I think it's us here on the 14th. And so, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's about it. And Juan, how do you get along with the other guys on the road? 
Well, actually, I ain't got no enemies over here. I guess, you know, there's some people you know, I don't really care too much about, right? But, you know, I let them do them and I do me. I don't really let none of what they do affect me. And I don't try to do anything that, that'll, that'll affect them, you know? Yeah, they tell me if you got if you got to live on the road, you kind of become a convict's convict, and yep. that's I, the way that works. I do me right, stay and my cell, whatever's in my cell, it's me. You know, nobody really can say nothing about it. You know, so and I don't really worry about what's going on in anybody else's cell. But yeah, I'm just you know, I got, got some friends back here. You know, and people, acquaintances, and stuff like that. But I ain't got no enemies though, and I don't know, just. Pretty good back here. You know what the thing is? Is if you're looking back here in different one, but you man, at least at least eighty percent could be in population with no no problem at all. Of course not. You know what I'm saying? They're not the worst of the worst. No, no, man. no. We we worked that out way back in Billy Hughes, and I don't think you've been down here long enough to remember no. Billy. But Billy and I worked with Wayne Scott, former director of prisons, but he was just the sergeant on death row then. Mm -hmm. Worked out the work release program where the guys could get out and so. Yeah, so you know, you know, it was crazy too. You know, during trial, before, before, during trial, before trial, I was offered a couple plea bargains, right? But I refused to plead guilty, so you know, they set the death penalty. But my thing is this, all right? If the, if the death penalty is supposed to be reserved for the worst of the worst, then you know, a plea bargain should never have been sought. On my thing, you know what I'm saying? Because if if, if you're seeking a, a, a death on me, then you know, no plea bargain shouldn't even be an option. But, you know, they offered me a plea bargain card a few times. In fact, even during trial, I was offered a plea bargain. It was a horrible plea bargain, but it was a plea bargain, right? And so now I proceed with trial, right? I already knew the trial was looking bad, too. I told them proceed with trial. And my thing is this, though. If they should offer me, if they, when they offered a plea bargain, that would have showed right there that I ain't the worst of the worst, and death penalty should never been came back up. You know, that's what I think, you know? And, you know, one time, too, you know, where, you know in, the, in San Antonio, at midnight, they'll call you. Hey, you need to put me in an intercom. Hey, Costa, you go to you go to court. You gonna shower, shave before you go? And he's like, yeah. It's like, all right. So I was already picking um, jurors and stuff right during for dire. And you know, I wake up all, you know, by myself, right? And I push the button. The officer, man, what time is it? And it was a little after twelve. I was like, hey, man, you let me shower, shave before I go to court. He's like, now they ain't call for court, right? I'm like, well, I'm supposed to go to court. I'm picking jurors and stuff, right? He's like, well, when they call, let you let you shave and shower. Like, all right, cool. So I keep back for a little bit. And I'm waiting, waiting. About an hour go by. Press it again. He's like, man, they ain't call for you yet. Like, well, let me go shower and shave anyway. So you go, nah, I'll wait until they call you. Like, all right, cool. Well, breakfast time comes, which is about maybe 3.30, and still nothing, right? Well, long story short, first, first shift comes on, nothing still, right? So officer, man, let me, let me go shave and shower before we go to court, right? And, and he's like, he's like, nah, right? So they didn't call for you. Well, finally, like about, I don't know, 8 o'clock, I finally get, I finally go. I get downstairs, and you don't have to go change out with the free roll clothes, mm -hmm. right? So I go to, I go to, I go to, I go to booking, right, and go to, go to clothing. And he said, well, what's your name? What you going? I go, I'm going to court. He goes, what's your name and number? So I give my name and number. He types up my career. He goes, this is our CO1. Our CO1 means you're going home, right? I'm like, nah, I'm going to court. And he's like, well, either way, you got to change out. So I get my stuff, right? I change out. I go get in the holding cell. I'm waiting. I hear some officer, Castillo Juan. But it's like a ways down ways, you know, down, down ways, right? No, he says his name, Castillo Juan. Nobody's answering, right? He said, Castillo Juan. So hey, I'm, I'm Juan Castillo. He's like, what are you doing over there? Get over here. So we, where he's at is these guys are all going home. They have a, they're lined up. You got that close to the door. Yeah, and I, so I'm, I'm in line. He's, he's asking me, well, what's your name? I know, Juan Castillo, your number, 714-294. And you know, what's your social security number and your address? And I tell him, man, look, I'm not going home. I'm going to court. He's not listening, right? He's still asking me. I was like, man, I'm not supposed to go home. I'm going to court, right? I told him, look, man, I'm picking a jury for a capital murder case. And that's when he stopped. And he went to the lieutenant's desk, right? And I said, hey, man, go back over there to the court. So if you look at my transcripts, it'll show when I got to when I got to Vodar, the judge said I told the, the, the one of the jurors, hey man, you know, sorry for there was a mix up at the jail. Because they're trying to release me. And I told him no because I, I was going to go to court. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm telling you. So if, you if, got that close to the door yeah. and it was a ruse. No, I I, they, they, I, no, it, no, no, they, I stopped. according to them, you're going home. Yeah. Because it was messed up in, in the paperwork. In the in the computer, right? So I like, man, you know, if if they would have actually forced me to leave, I would have just walked to the courthouse. Thinking back now, I should have I should just left, right? But at the same time, I, I had no reason to leave. You know what I'm saying? I'm going, I'm, I really, I really truly believed that even with the, even with the terrible lawyer, I really believed that I was gonna go to trial and go home, or go go actually go to the feds and then go home. But I don't know, man. Just <laughs> look back now, you know. Yeah. Should have should have should have right? Nah, you know I don't regret it no. though. You know, when we're running out of time, anything you want to, we've talked about to you, I, I love that story, by the way, I'll, I'll steal it and tell it sometime. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to say too much, right? 
I don't know. I didn't really know what to expect, right? Let's do some of the shows sometime, right? But I don't know, just, you know, just I don't really know too much to say, right? I guess I'm not really a, a talkative person. Let's, let's no, you've been done very well in this interview. Let's you carried me. most of it. I didn't want to do much, and I didn't. <laughs> and listen, you've been easy for me to interview, mm -hmm. and I appreciate your attitude and your courage. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, I appreciate it, right? But, um, and, oh, the, cause you, you stick to everything to the to to what's on the on the on the on, on the Ms. Trump Trump thing, right? Yeah. All right. Um, is that cool if I send you something? Hmm? Is that cool if I send you something? Sure. Okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll take I'll take anything you send me and make sure it gets to the lawyers. They do the work. Yeah. I'll, 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 I, I play mother hen, and they do the work. I'll put it in the mail in the morning. Okay. Yeah. And so I that's it, right? But you know, coming here, you know, you, you meet, I met people I didn't even think I would ever, ever meet, right? And there, there were a lot, a lot of times, they they always help you get through here, right? They help you, you know, with so much, you know what I'm saying? Just, just mail, just encouraging with words, you know? You make, you know, oh, you, you, laugh. Get, you you got fans all over the world now. Yeah, but I don't know. I wish you had had these back during the days of the trial. Man, I wish I had like some of the people, some some of my friends I got right now. I wish I would know them when I was free, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn. Yeah, they're folks you can have coffee with. Huh? They're folks you can have coffee with. Man, they're, they're, this is this is the most of people, right? This is me. One, thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, as you can tell, uh, one and I got along very well. In the course of that interview, we uh, uh, we had spent a few minutes before the interview bonding and. As the interview progressed, um, we got to be better and better friends. That's a horrible part about this job of doing execution watches that uh, I remember when I used to do that. Do execution watch about names that appeared before me in paper, but now I've actually met these people and I've had a conversation with them. And that was tape recorded for you to see. By the way, the... Uh, Tape recording will be posted at Houston Media Source and on the website in a few days. It takes Mark a little while to take the videotape of this show and splice it in the videotape of the interview, but it will be there. I want to remind you, if you've been tuned in, listening, hoping to hear Arab voices, and there's a lot going on in that part of the world, Arab voices is certainly an interesting program right now. Uh, they were preempted so that we could cover the execution of Juan Castillo. Uh, but they'll be back next week with uh, their usual important and pertinent and, and sometimes very important information for you. So don't give up on Arab voices. Uh, they're a wonderful crew. Paige, what happened in the trial in this case? Well, briefly, in the trial, um, the state presented its evidence and there was com there were competing theories as to guilt and innocence in the trial itself uh there was discussion about um there was discussion with witnesses about whether or not uh whether or not it started out as an aggravated robbery, there is some suggestion that it was a, a there was a jealousy issue going on between the uh, between Mr. Castillo's present girlfriend and uh, the decedent uh, Mr. Garcia's former girlfriend, who is the same person. That was Miss Espinosa. Yes? In any event, um, the, do, they actually, do they actually have to resolve that conflict in order to make this a capital case? No, they didn't. The issue to make it a capital was... It had to be robbery. It had to have been aggravated robbery, and a death had to result as at, through the course of committing the aggravated robbery. It was, it was just jealous robbery. boyfriends killing. That's not capital. No, that would have been murder, probably. It would have been murder, but not capital. Yeah, just plain old you know, garden variety murder. Um, in any event, uh, the guilt-innocence part of the case was 
the, it appears that uh, our dis, our defendant was involved, actually involved with his lawyers in formulating the guilt innocence issue of the case. However, once the jury found him guilty of capital murder, the punishment phase was set to begin, and. Mr. Castillo, either through anger or shock or some other emotion that I, I, I can't put my finger on, uh, decided that he wanted to represent himself. Now, his two lawyers, which were experienced capital lawyers, uh, were placed on san standby sort of mode during the punishment hearing. They were there to assist him if he wanted assistance, or they could take it over if he decided to give up self-representation. But he specifically asked his judge to represent himself at punishment and to make his lawyer sit down and shut up. And they did. And the punishment session lasted two days, and in the course of punishment, he did not call any witnesses. He did not cross-examine any witnesses. There was no evidence as to, you know, diminish punishment, to make it a life sentence as opposed to a death sentence. And it was probably one of the shortest deliberations in the history of Bayer County. It took about 25 minutes for the jury to come back and say death. So that is what happened in the trial. Uh, we're going to have Larry address the accomplice witness problem in the trial. And Mike is going to refer to some of the policy issues surrounding the accomplice witness problem. And Jack is going to talk about the punishment hearing itself. So, Larry, would you like to begin? Sure. Uh, briefly, <clears throat> Ray, as Paige has already mentioned, uh, back in December of 2003, uh, Tommy Garcia Jr. was an up-and-coming rap, rap star in San Antonio, about 19 years old. And he got set up for robbery. By four people, those people being Deborah Espinosa, uh, uh, Francisco Gonzalez, and Teresa Quintero, uh, along with Juan Castillo. So, so uh, Espinosa uh, served his bait, got uh, Tommy Garcia to a secluded area, where uh, he was to be robbed by Gonzalez, Francisco Gonzalez, and and uh, Juan Castillo. Castillo, according to the evidence primarily coming from co-defendants. Castillo had a weapon, had a gun. Uh, Gonzalez had a gun, but his, his was supposed to for show because it didn't work. Uh, so so Castillo comes up to the car, knocks out a black back window, points a gun at, at, uh, at uh, 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 Garcia, and says, give me your money. Well, that's what they thought was going to happen. You're going get, to get, get, get the money. But Garcia takes off running. And so um, Castillo pumps him, uh, according to the witnesses. And, and so right at that point, uh, um, uh, Espinola's picked up right away. Uh, Gonzalez picked up shortly after her. And then days later, uh, after Gonzalez and Espinosa have given a lot of testimony saying, fingering Juan Castillo, then Juan Castillo now is, is charged with a capital murder. Um. The primary witness, there was no forensic evidence tying him to the murder. They they didn't find the weapon. There was no DNA discovered of him, nothing linking him other than the testimony of the accomplices called accomplice witnesses. Now, when, when, you, when, you, when you have accomplice witness testimony, uh, that has to be, there has to be some corroboration. That is, if you take out all the accomplice witness testimony, uh, is there enough evidence to find the person guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Uh, but the, the evidence, the, the non-accomplice witness testimony does not have to be uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. It just has to be something that tends to tie the accused to the offense. And so there, there were several things that tended to tie him. Uh, the presence of a necklace that he had, the, the, the uh, Garcia's necklace, someone said they saw it on him 
and then it says they told him, hey, look, you know, that, that necklace looks looks familiar. So he took it off. And so other witnesses says we, we saw him with, with, with the necklace of the dead guy. Uh, and, and there were other witnesses that says, yeah, I, I heard him say something about, you know, th- they're not going to do anything to me because they can't find the weapon because I ran away and I, I hit it. Both the weapon and the um, um, the bulletproof vest, the vest, he, 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 there are witnesses other than the accomplices who said that he um, had, had admitted to them. Okay, and and the circumstances behind the 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 meeting together, there were, there were witnesses says, yeah, we, we we knew that they were gonna go that uh, uh, Espinosa uh, was gonna go and meet with Garcia, and then shortly thereafter, Espinosa called and says somebody killed Garcia. Okay, so so there there were other things, and and, and the, the the corroboration does not necessarily have to be corroboration. Yeah, I, I've got a dumb question to ask about that because. I recall from my early youth that uh, the Rosenberg case, the Rosenbergs could not have been executed under state law because uh, it was all testimony of co-conspirators and uh, you needed more evidence to do an execution of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg's famous case. Okay. Uh, that they would not have been executed under state law, but they could be executed under federal law because the burden of additional evidence besides co involved conspirators was insufficient. Uh, uh, what am I missing? You're not missing anything, right? What you, th- there were differing standards between the state and the yeah. federal law in terms of the kind of corroboration that is needed to substantiate a conviction, particularly capital murder. And all they uh, had in the Roseburg case was the half of a jello ca- box cap. Okay, but, <laughs> but but the level of corroboration is very low even now. Mike has some problem with that. But the, 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 the level of corroboration just has to be something that, not beyond a reasonable doubt, you know, not even clear, clear and convincing, but just something that tends to connect the defendant, the, the accused, to the offense. That's all that's taken, that, that's required. And in this case, it was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray, Elizabeth has something to say. As, yeah, Ray, uh, I just heard from a reporter at Huntsville, Linda Huhan, and she as said Larry stated, the witnesses this have is just come out. Uh, the witnesses have come out and across the road. I, I, I interrupt everything to make that announcement. Thank you. Juan Castillo at this time is dead. Uh, his body will be removed from the death chamber by the Carnes Funeral Services, and he'll be taken to a small church not far so his families can touch the body while it still has warmth. I know that's morbid. Uh, but I have to make this announcement every time they execute somebody. It will go on record as a homicide. It was a homicide. Uh, Juan Castillo died as a result of a homicide by the state of Texas against him. I'm sorry. Now, Ma. I agree with everything Larry said. <clears throat> the law is real clear that... A co-defendant cannot testify against you unless there's some proof to show he's telling the truth. I think that's good law when it comes to robbery, when it comes to theft, when it comes to drug dealing. The trouble is this is capital murder. I think capital murder needs a higher standard. I think the decision on who to execute should be, if we're going to believe an execution, that decision should come from the government and the courts. It should not come from co-defendants when four people agreed to commit a robbery. And during that robbery, either it was planned to kill this man or it was an impulse to kill this man. But all four were there together. The first two arrested, they got 40 years by fingering the third person as a shooter. The truth is there's no evidence he's a shooter. We don't know to this day who the shooter was. The only evidence we have who the shooter is are the other two. Except for the part that, <clears throat> um, except for the part that Castillo told a fellow inmate while he was in jail before trial that, oh, he, you know, I did this, I did this, but it's okay. Jack, they, they simply won't have. Uh, Jack they, is they one who, one who has been to jail. The major can come in and say, all right, who wants to have me out on this case? 
and you get 25 volunteers that'll step up and say, what lie you want me to tell if I'm going to help you out this sure. case? It should not be decided by the co-defendants on who's going to be executed. It should be decided by the government. In my position, if you can't punish them all equally, one should not be singled out. And the one being singled out should not be singled out by his co-defendants. They all committed the crimes. The other thing that bothers me is I think the most guilty person is the girlfriend. Here is the girl who was the girlfriend of the person who was killed. She's the girlfriend of the guy we just killed today. She's the one who knew how much money she had. She was the one who lured him over there. She was the one who was going to have sex with him, and all of a sudden he's robbed. Why is she let loose from any punishment? And what about the second girl? There was another girl there that we don't even see was being charged. Why she a was, woman give a different standard than that? The second girl is supposed to be the getaway driver? Yeah. Yes, yes the getaway driver. And no, she got away. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> it, indeed, it appears that she might have. Matter of speaking. Why do we have a different standard between men, and, between men and women? Why? They were all there. They all committed the crime. And my position is she is as... She's... She, it might have been her idea. We don't know. Everybody wants to pin it on him, but it all came from the co-defendants. And my position is strictly the government should decide who should be executed, not the co-defendants. If they got I, 40 years, they also got 40 years. Michael, I've said this before to you, and I'll say it again. The absence of evidence is not evidence. The absence of evidence it means not it evidence, should not but be But it does killing. take evidence to kill somebody. Well. I mean, the jello cap was not enough in the Rosenberg case. I understand that. Yeah, but there, there was a real Jello case, box cap, and then the Jello they had it. it. It's in evidence box somewhere. Uh, uh, but Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were killed under federal law, where uh, corroborating co-defendants' testimony alone could result in an execution. But that could not happen in any state jurisdiction in the country at the time. So has the standard changed? Are, uh, uh, are are we just are we just well? I mean, he's the wrong color, and he because he admits in the interview that he was a Bear County on the streets punk kid. That's what he grew up as. He <clears throat> lays that out with no question in my mind that he was telling the truth. And is that just what? We do with punk kids who grow up on the wrong side of the track in San Antonio or anywhere else. That's, right. That's probably a good time to segue into punishment and why uh, why Castillo got the death penalty for this case. Yeah, you know, you've seen folks who committed more not get put to death. You've seen folks who did more who committed more, um, more murders and not get the death penalty, get life in prison instead. I think really what happened, if you look at the totality of the case, this execution was a self-inflicted execution. I think uh, looking at the uh, court documents, it seems fairly evident that Castillo was absolutely certain he was gonna he was going to be exonerated that they were gonna find him not guilty he told uh, t told the uh, 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 told an inmate yeah, the absence of gun is right. uh, uh, yeah. insufficient evidence oh, right. uh, no no powder burns and he had a mask on he had a bulletproof vest on that he ditched in a field that he admitted to uh, you know to uh, to the uh, to his fellow inmate he I think. I really think he was absolutely certain the jury was not going to come back and say guilty. Now, keep in mind, for the folks who don't know the uh, uh, the Texas, uh, Texas death penalty system, first you have guilt innocence. And once you have guilt innocence, then you have, uh, then you have punishment. And in the punishment phase, at least in a death penalty case, you want to give mitigation evidence. You want to talk about the things that um, uh, you want to bring up the issue and of future Davis. None of it happened. None of it happened. He yeah. his love. None of it happened. And I think the reason why none of it happened was because Castillo was so absolutely convinced he was going to be exonerated, or at least get a hung jury. That when it came back guilty, he fired his lawyers. But that was a fait accompli. <clears throat> Yes. Did yeah. he have trouble adjusting the fact that he had been convicted? 
I think he. I think you know. I think he was. He was so angry at his lawyers. At at his lawyers, so in shock that he said these lawyers are obviously not doing their job. I'm going to fire them. And then in the punishment phase, he sat on his hands because maybe he knew. The other one was the one who was the shooter. We still don't know who shot the gun. Again, All the we absence have, of evidence is not evidence. And the absence of evidence does not mean we execute a man. What that means is everybody is punished yeah, equally. That both way, Jack. I, I yeah. understand. And maybe he was so mad because he was the only one that knew he didn't do it, that his lawyers couldn't have proved that he didn't do it. The fact is we don't know who did it. All we know I, is the other guy said he did it. I don't know, how much, you I don't know how much you listened to the interview. But in the interview, he had, talks about one of his co-defendants sending surreptitiously somebody in to the jail to do something. You were listening to that, Larry. Did you get that part? And that he was adamant about that part. Uh, I, and I didn't know where that was going. Well, guess what? I hear background music. You know what that means? The program's over. Juan Castillo is dead, and so is the show. My name is Ray Hill, and I am... Uh, Honored to work with these wonderful people around here. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. I'm honored to work with uh, our technical staff. Mark and I make those long trips uh, to Livingston to do the interviews. But here's the deal. Juan Castilla is dead, and uh, we don't know, really, other than your opinion of the videotape and the sound of his interview. Who's right? But we presented this, and I want to thank Elizabeth Stein, who is a wizard producer. She makes all this happen, and she tells me she is my boss at least three times a day. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Larry Douglas, Mike Gillespie, Jack Lee, and the, tonight's lead attorney on the case, Paige Yannick. Uh, they built in that deeply for you. Linda Hugman is um, in Huntsville. Thank you for her. We did not actually get a spokesperson from TDCJ on the air for an interview, but uh, uh, the music you hear is Victoria Panetti. Her brother remains on death row, a mental patient awaiting to be killed by the state of Texas. Uh, our next execution watch is coming up in a couple of weeks. And uh, so stay tuned. As it's scheduled, you can visit us on executionwatch.org or our Facebook page. My name is Ray Hill, and thank you, and good night.